Our text for this morning is coming from Matthew chapter 5, verses 43 to 46. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version with a Dominique twist. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be sons and daughters of your parent in heaven, for God makes the sun rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. What's love got to do with it? Let's pray. God, we thank you for being God. We thank you for this time. We ask you, God, now to prepare our hearts, our minds, and our spirits to hear from you. We ask you, God, to anoint me afresh from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. And now, God, I pray that as I wrestled in preparation, you give me power and proclamation. In your son's name I pray, amen. amen. What's love got to do with it? What's love got to do with it is a very prolific question coined in 1984 by Tina Turner in her fifth album, in one single. What's love got to do with it? Is it really just a secondhand emotion? What's love got to do with it? Still remain prolific later on in a film entitled What's Love Got to Do With It? Telling her story of her struggle with love or trying to be loved. Still is a prolific question here today in 2012. What's love got to do with it? We look at our text and Jesus says to love your enemies. What's love got to do with it? Everything. It makes me question what exactly was Jesus thinking when he declared to the multitude that one must love your enemy, love the ones that persecute you, that will use you, that despise you, that talk about you, that gossip about you. Love them just as you would love a friend and love yourself. But I wonder if he ever thought about the individual who was an enemy to themselves. When you look in the mirror and you're challenged at what you see, when you know that what you're living and saying is two different things, when you know that what you preach is not really what you, ex what you are an example of, do you really love the enemy you're looking at in the preach mirror? That, preach that. What's love got to do with it? Everything. Considering the source, Jesus himself, who knew he was public enemy number one, who knew he had several enemies, declared that we must love our enemies. What's love got to do with it? Everything. But as we consider how Jesus was fashioned, fashioned in love, given in love, died in love, and resurrected in love, it makes sense that he would say to love your enemy. So John 3.16 says, for God so loved the world. Isn't it interesting that God loved a world that he did not know? God loved the world of individuals and people and things that he saw way before we ever existed. Didn't say that God just loved black people. God just loved white people. God just loved Asians and Latinos. For God so loved the world, the good and the bad. For God so loved the world, the sky and the sea. For God so loved the world, the ants and the bee. For God so loved the world. He for so loved the world, each and everything within it. For God so loved the world. God's love is limitless. Even when you feel like you can't be loved, God still loves you. For God so loved the world that he gave. Love is an action word. Love isn't just a second-hand emotion. Love isn't just a four-letter word used on Valentine's Day and birthdays and Christmas. Love is an action word that requires one to give of themselves. But God so loved the world, all that is within it, that he gave his only begotten son, which means the giving hurts. No wonder Jesus said to love your enemies. It means you have to do something you're not comfortable with. 
You mean God loved the world? He loved you and me despite our flaws and all that we've done and said in our weak moments and even when we denied who God was, he loved me enough over 2,000 years ago to give of himself to create a being of who he was and send him here on earth. He loved me enough to do so? Huh. Loving my enemy simply can't be that hard if God loved me, because at one time I must have been God's enemy. Yeah, you know, when you think you're God, after all the education you've gained, when you think you can control your finances, when you yourself are worshiping who you think you are or will be, yeah, a form of idolatry, you have become an enemy of God, and God is asking you to love yourself. He said he loved you so much that he sent his only begotten son. You were his enemy. You were public enemy one, number one. You were heaven's enemy, but God thought enough of you and I to love us past our idolatry, Remembering who we thought we were, knowing that God created us to be even more than that. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever. Now, that piece is interesting to me. It means that God's love is not limited to a particular population, but whosoever is open. Whosoever chooses to believe, whosoever decides to receive, whosoever wants this salvation. That means it's a choice to decide whether or not you're going to be God's enemy or not. Now, we're all here today, and we've decided that we didn't want to be God's enemy. But the truth of the matter is that every day we wake up, somewhere along the line, we cross over to the enemy side. Somewhere along the line, we forget to give God glory and praise for all that God has done. Somewhere along the line, the devil isn't the only enemy, but we somehow have joined the camp. But God so loved the world us and all our behaviors and words and actions that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him. God's love is also eternal and redemptive and salvific that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish. You mean to tell me after all that I've done when I deserve to die, I deserve to go to hell, I deserve for God to turn his back on me, that God so loved me that he gave himself his only begotten son, sent him here on earth with me in mind, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that God so loved the world that he loved me even his enemy. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Love your enemy. Love yourself. Amen. <laughs>